Hi, and welcome to this Summer Sunday's worship service. I wish I could actually see you there, but hopefully soon you'll be here again. Let us begin with uh, gathering here. Arise, your light has come, the Spirit's call obey. Show forth the glory of your God which shines on you today. Arise, your light has come, fling wide the prison's door. Proclaim the captive's liberty, good tidings to the poor. Arise, your light has come, all you in sorrow born. Bind up the broken-hearted ones, and comfort those who mourn. Arise, your light has come, the mountains burst in song. Rise up like eagles on the wing, God's power will make us strong. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, from you come all holy desires, all good counsel, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of your enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Amos, chapter 7, verses 7 through 15. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, See, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from this land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ubi caritas et amor. Ubi caritas Deus ibides. Ubi caritas Deus e Deus, o 
iubi caritas et amor, iubi caritas Deus ibi The second reading from Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let your spirit King Herod heard of the disciples preaching, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, To John, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others say, It is Elijah. And others said, It is a prophet like the one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men to arrest John, bound him and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother's brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests, and the king said to the girl, Ask for me, ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. 
The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent the soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Wow, that's some text, isn't it? A story how power and reputation tramples justice down, and how John dared to speak against Herod. Herod could not let this behavior to continue, so he threw John in jail. So what was the issue here to begin with? Herod had divorced his first wife and married Herodias, his brother's wife. Well, this doesn't seem terrible in today's context. Stuff happens. However, since his brother was still alive, and at that time, this was against the Jewish law back then, and John the Baptist calls him upon it. Herod is supposed to be keeping the Jewish law, not breaking it. Then King Herod decides to have a lavish birthday party for himself, and makes a promise that seems to be an awesome one. Imagine this, he promises to give his daughter, his stepdaughter, whatever she asks, because her dancing has pleased him so much. Herodias realizes that here she has a chance to get rid of John for good, and Herod doesn't have the guts to say no in front of all the guests. Herodias tells her daughter to ask John the baptizer's head on a platter. So Herod keeps his promise at the cost of John's life. John died because he dared to resist the rules of his time. And so did, John, so did Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Bonhoeffer was a Lutheran pastor and university professor during the Second World War. He res resisted publicly Hitler and the Nazis, Nazism. Bonhoeffer was lecturing in the U.S. at the time and could have stayed and be safe. However, he felt that he could not stay in the background, going back to Germany and continued his resistance. He took part in the plot to assassinate, assassinate Hitler, but the plot failed. Bonhoeffer was arrested and thrown in jail. During his jail time, he gave pastoral care to his fellow prisoners and taught them about Jesus Christ in their context, there and then. Bonhoeffer was hanged 23 days before the fall of the Nazism. He was murdered because he was not afraid to speak against the ruler, publicly. He dared to be on the side of the vulnerable. Power can do terrible things. In today's Gospel text, Herodias is using her own daughter to get what she wants. Herod is willing to be a murderer rather than the promise breaker. The daughter doesn't seem to understand that she is being used. I imagine some of us have seen partners become enemies, people using one another, people feeling discarded or being manipulated. I'm sure we know that this is not what families are for, be it our immediate families, our congregational families, or any other. Today's first reading tells about God's plan for a different kind of family, a family where we are God's own children, a family where God desires to gather all things on heaven and earth together in Christ. There's no disagreement. No abuse or manipulation. No discarding of people or discarding of feelings. No using of others. Instead, there is love that endures. Love that shines through, not in empty promises or dangerous ones, but in praise. In baptism, 
we have been adopted into God's family. As members of God's family, we are loved unconditionally with a love that can reach out in love and service to others. Think about what happens right after today's text in Mark's Gospel. How many of you remember what it is? Well, Jesus throws a dinner party. It is the feeding of the 5,000, a totally different party than what we heard today. Imagine the setting. An open field where everyone is welcome and where everyone is a guest of honor. No boasting, just thanksgiving. No empty promises, just simple food, blessed, broken, and shared, and enough for everyone. So no, no horrible silver platter of death, just twelve baskets filled with abundant life-giving bread and fish. Welcome to the feast. Amen. Let us now join in singing the hymn of the day. Restore, the, restore peace to our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
God of salvation, bring wholeness to all your beloved children. Anoint the hands of all caregivers, nurses, doctors, therapists, hospice workers, and chaplains. Bring abundance of life to all who long for healing, especially all those whom we name in our hearts or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of tenderness, you adopt us as your own. Help us to provide nourishing care for all children in our midst. Inspire us with their creativity and energy. Heal and protect children who are victims of abuse, neglect, or scorn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. God of saints, you have claimed the faithful departed as your own and given them an inheritance in glory. Sustain us in faith until the fullness of time, when you gather up all things in heaven and on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we lift to you these prayers and the prayers of our hearts, trusting in your everlasting love and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us now join in the singing, sending him. Sent forth by God's blessing, our true faith confessing, the people of God from this dwelling take leave. The supper is ended, oh now be extended, the fruits of this service in all who believe. The seed of Christ teaching, receptive souls reaching, the blossom in action for God and for all. Your grace shall incite us, your love shall unite us to work for your kingdom and answer your call. With praise and thanksgiving to God ever living, the tasks of our everyday life we will our faith ever sharing, in love ever caring, embracing God's children, the whole human race. With your feast you feed us, with your light now lead us, unite us as one in this life that we share. Then may all the living, with praise and thanksgiving, Give honor to Christ and his name that we bear. Go in peace, you are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.